Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T Touch practitioner for animals and people. And this is Tristan, he's a corgi. And we're here for another episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And we're continuing today to talk about emotion code, which is a system of releasing trapped emotions from the body. And those trapped emotions could be inhibiting your ability to relate to your dog. They could be making it so that your dog cannot relate well to other dogs in the house. They could be issues related to your dog's level of anxiety or nervousness or your horse's inability to walk through water confidently. Um, there are all kinds of manifestations of what happens when you have trapped emotions in your body. So releasing them can be enormously beneficial in any number of ways for your pet and for yourself. And so, as I mentioned before, one of the most important things um, for a successful session with emotion code work is to get a really specific question that you're working with. So I have an example here of one animal I worked with who released a lot of emotions. And we asked the animal, do you have trapped emotions keeping you from having a better relationship with your person? And that's a pretty broad question, but for the first session, that seems to have worked really well for this animal because they released a lot of emotions. So that's a pretty common one as well. Many people um, feel like they're not communicating well with their pet or their horse and um, getting a closer relationship with them can answer um, many of the questions and problems that we have with our animals. So after all, they are doing everything in their power to try to relate to us. They are trying to understand our body language, our the structural, physical, linguistic language. They are trying to understand our emotions and our moods and just trying to read us in a very sensitive way. Every animal does that. And so the least we can do is try to help them with that as best we can by being clear and calm and recognizing that their day has not been like our day when we spend time with them. And they are so happy to see us no matter what kind of animal it is and that we need to honor that and come to them as our best selves, which is why I often uh, encourage people before they get out of the car coming home from work or getting out at the barn to see their horse or if they just have to walk across their property to the barn, just do a heart hug first on yourself. Take some deep breaths and connect with your animal so that you come to your animal as um, your best self and not the frantic scrambled racing to get there, uh, still left over from work, anger, you know, fed up with the grocery store lines person that comes in the house most of the time because many of us have a lot of stress in our lives, if not all of us. <laughs> so with this particular animal, first I ask permission of the animal to work with an emotion code session. So I do that first by um, finding a place in myself that can relate to the animal. So the easiest way to do that is to look at a picture of the animal and hold your hands the way I do here. And then just keep saying to yourself, um, my name is the animal, we'll say Fluffy today. My name is Fluffy, my name is Fluffy, my name is Fluffy, my name is Fluffy, until I get a really strong bond between my fingers here so that I am really relating to Fluffy and not me. And I like to keep a picture of the animal in front of me when I do that. It's not essential. Um, it may not even be necessary, but it helps me. So I often ask people to send me a picture of the pet because then I know more about them um, just from my other background. So once I have gotten my name to be Fluffy, then I will ask Fluffy's permission, you know, would you like to do an emotion code session with me today to release trapped emotions? And the answer is generally yes. It's not always yes. I had one dog who was not at all ready to work with their heart wall and uh, we had to wait a couple of weeks till the other parts of the session um, kind of processed through that pup before we could go back and work with the heart wall. So it is important to ask permission. And then um, I would ask Fluffy, do you have trapped emotions that are keeping you from having a better relationship from your, with your person? And a better way to ask that question might even be, you know, what do you need to release to have a good relationship with your person? And so we use that chart. I have a bigger copy of it here so that it's more viewable on this. So usually we start with column A or B and then we go down the rows, odd or even, and then we find the specific box and we ask specific questions of those emotions. So 
my hypothetical fluffy here, I would say, okay, are those trapped emotions that you want to release in column A or B? So they're in column A. And then are they in an odd row? No, they're in an even row. Okay. So then I say, is it row two, row four? It's in row six. So in row six, we have humiliation, jealousy, longing, lust, overwhelm. So the emotion that Fluffy wants to release right now related to relating to his person is overwhelm. So once I find that, I take my magnets and I have a couple of different ones. I have a magnet that's on the back of this card that I use when I'm traveling. Um, this one was just a really large, strong refrigerator magnet. These are much more powerful. So then when I find the overwhelm, I will run this over my governing meridian three times to clear that emotion. I think I did it four times. It felt good. It gives you a little head massage. It's got little bumps on the magnets. And then that emotion is completely released. So then I'll ask Fluffy again, do you have more trapped, do you have another trapped emotion that is that you would like to release so you can bond better with your person? And always the answer is yes. And an animal re release, you know, 20, 10, five, some of my early sessions when I was first learning this, it was only like five. And that was um, not typical of what I'm getting now. You know, as you learn the work, you get more uh, challenges with it and animals feel more at ease with you and they release more emotions. So yes, Fluffy has more emotions to release. Are they in column A or B? So now they're in column B. And is it in an odd row? No, it's an even row. Is it two, four, six, two. And then we look at failure, helpless, hopeless, lack of control, low self-esteem. So it's lack of control. And then we just do the governing meridian again three times. And then it's released and we continue down the line until we've released as many emotions as Fluffy has to release today. And some of the emotions, like I have one animal that I actually did do that question with and they released these emotions, indecisiveness, grief, panic, panic at age four. So when we get to that emotion, let's say we were back at lack of control, we ask also, do, you need to, do we need to know more about that? No, or yes. So then we say, let's say Fluffy's 10, we say before the age of five? No, after the age of five, yes. And then we say age six, age seven, age eight, so at age eight, Fluffy felt a lack of control. And then we can ask him again if we need to know more. Sometimes that emotion will be related to an ancestor and they'll say yes. But generally, we don't need to know more than the age. And so then we would use this to go over the governing vessel again three times to release that lack of control. So if I'm doing this session for a client, I usually keep a written record either on paper like this <laughs> or on the computer. And what we'll find is, like I'll show you with this animal, um, is a list of re emotions released and then occasionally, like every fourth one, third one, we'll get an age related to that. So this animal released indecisiveness, grief, panic, panic from age four, um, and then in their heart wall, they also released longing, unsupported at age eight, shock at age eight, terror at age eight, um, unworthiness at age eight. And in fact, this animal found a new person at age eight and underwent a lot of transition when they were being sold and moved around. So that unsupported shock, terror, and unworthiness all were happening at that time of great emotional upheaval when this animal was changing homes. And when we are working with a heart wall, they also had these other emotions, unsupported from age eight and unsupported from age nine, which also we found to belong to that animal's grandmother. So it's an inherited emotion. And when that happens, we have to use the magnets on the governing meridian 10 times because we have to go back through generations to release that trapped emotion. So always um, we ask how thick the heart wall is if we're working with the heart wall by the same way, you know, you, you just get a sense. Is it more than 12 inches? 
and then go out from there or is it less than 12 inches and we'll ask that before and after we start to work with the heart wall so that we have a sense of how far we've come when we've released some of these emotions and then we have a sense of how thick the heart wall still is and people have asked me you know it's only three inches thick now with my horse or my dog why do i need to continue but generally they've seen the improvement from like a 16 inch thick wall down to that one or two inches and it is amazing those who choose to continue to release the heart wall fully really see a huge change in their dog or their horse and their relationship with them so it is worth noting that releasing that heart wall fully is worthwhile um, some of the other emotions this guy released that day were um, unworthiness grief from age seven anger from age seven anxiety and then what we discovered about this age seven thing, the animal was put into a training program and they were working really hard and uh, pretty successful. So a lot of pressure was put on them to improve even more. And that's when we get this idea of grief and anger because they're grieving their old happier life without the training program. And they were also really angry because they were good at what they were doing, but they didn't want to do it. And so, for this animal, emotion code work was really helpful to find out some of the things that had happened to them because we didn't know prior to this that they had been in this training program. The person contacted the prior owner and found out that the animal had been really pressured. And she had a sense of it when she got the animal. Um, you know, a lot of animals that are used in show, dogs or horses, um, or kitties even for that matter, or bunnies, can be put under a lot of pressure to perform. And even if they hadn't changed owners, you know, somebody may love agility and get another Aussie and want to keep doing agility. And maybe this Aussie is not that excited about agility and wants to do nose work. And so even though all the other five dogs have loved it and done it well, this particular dog may not be that interested. So you have to look at them as individuals. And emotion code is just a way to help that. So after we've released a set of emotions, um, the person is sitting there looking at their list saying, shock, indecisive, anger, fear, defensive, depression, betrayal, unworthy. Oh my gosh, my poor pet. But here's the thing that except for a couple, like overjoy is on here, but most of these um, emotions are negative because mostly negative em emotions are what gets stuck in your body and create trouble in your life. So that's why we're releasing mostly these negative ones and they say, oh my gosh, I must be a terrible owner if all this stuff is going on. But here's the thing. Everything in your dog's life or your horse's life or your cat's and rabbit's life is not about you. They have a whole experience that is beyond you every day. You know, maybe the UPS guy came to the door and didn't even come in, didn't even see your dog. But maybe they did something different that day that left your dog feeling indecisive. Do I bark? Do I not bark? Is he just sitting in the driveway maybe and not actually dropping off a box? So it could be something seemingly minor like that to you that really confused your dog, especially a younger or an older dog. Something like that could make a big difference. And certainly interactions with other dogs. Um, maybe a lot of dogs I know um, are really fearful of gunshots during the hunting season. And so you'll be walking your dog and they'll hear the shots in the distance and become really frightened. And so they may have a trapped emotion from that experience. And certainly when I first moved here, I've got neighbors two doors in every direction that shoot a lot all day sometimes. And Tristan was so terrified. He could not go out my driveway and turn right because the shots were so loud. And I could only take him for short walks because he was so terrified. So something like that can also create trapped emotions in your dog. So it doesn't have to be even just one swipe with the cat. Maybe your dog is really trying hard to be friends with your cat and sitting there and looking at them and, you know, kind of maybe nosing them a little bit, testing to see if they want to snuggle. And then the cat gets annoyed and strikes them with his claw or closely almost strikes him with his claw. Even something like that can create trapped emotions in your dog. And you might not even know about that. You leave them at home all day. Who knows what they're doing? So it's not um, a reflection on you when you have all these negative emotions being released from your dog. The important thing is that they are released and that they are not there anymore. And I have to say for a lot of dogs and horses, 
releasing emotion codes that um, and or releasing trapped emotions that are related to a physical injury are the ones that are the most um, important, I think, for a, an animal to uh, go on and be successful. So if your animal has had any kind of a surgery, neutering, um, maybe patella surgery for your dog or your horse, or a horse that fell in the pasture or slipped on ice or got bumped in the door or squeezed out by another horse or ran through the fence with the herd one day, any number of things like that can cause trapped emotions to be left in your animal's body. So if there is any kind of a physical insult, those are areas to address with um, emotion code work. So for instance, I have a horse who got kicked. He has a chronic stifle problem, not my personal horse, a horse client. And so I've done a few sessions of emotion code with different questions to get all of the trapped emotions out of that stifle. And he has gotten stronger and better. Of course, he's on um, an exercise program I gave him as well. And he's getting lots of acupuncture and um, craniosacral therapy and other adjunct therapies. But I feel that the trapped emotions released from that injury are also part of his healing process and are helping him be able to get the most benefit from the soft tissue work and acupuncture as well. So I think if you've got a dog or a horse or a cat who's had some kind of physical insult, that it's really important to look at the trapped emotions that could be limiting them. For a cat, you know, sometimes after the spay and neutering, they just don't jump as much as they used to. There's just like this loss of joy in their lives because cats love to climb and be up on things and you know sometimes to the point where we're not happy about it but if your cat is kind of sedate and quiet and not interacting with you and the other cats there could be some lingering trapped emotions that need to be released for that cat to feel comfortable fitting into his new environment so that's a look at what a session is like at the end of the session I always thank the animal so thank you, Fluffy. <laughs> and then I um, ask if there's anything else they need. And if I don't get um, a no on that, I continue on with my emotion code work. And maybe one in 10 times I have an animal say, oh, wait a minute, I have one more thing, one more thing you need to do. So then I have to go back and work on them a little bit longer. And sometimes I'll have you know a whole list of emotions that are released. Other times it's five or six. And sometimes the animals with the most that they have released um, come back and say, yeah, I have another couple I've just realized. So, and you're working with the higher consciousness of the animal. Some of my clients who, if I have a date to work with their dog at five o'clock on Wednesday, long distance, um, and they'll forget about it. And then they'll get my email at 5.45 or six o'clock and they'll say, oh, that's so funny. He was sitting with me and staring at me and looking at me so intently, trying to get me to understand something and I had no idea what he meant. It must have been when you were working on him. And other people have, who didn't schedule a specific time have said, you know, on Thursday morning, gee, I don't know what happened on Wednesday, but on Thursday he was a different dog. So there can be profound changes. And as I pointed out before, they can be a little kind of wonky for a couple of days, trying to figure out what this new self feels like. And as I've also mentioned, it's a good idea to do a couple of sessions because there's usually, um, once the initial layer is released, more deeper layers um, come up and are ready to be released as well. So it's a real service to your animal to do emotion code work with them. And I'm very happy to be able to do this for animals, especially um, ones that I can't see live. And uh, so, and then as I said, you can also find out things um, about these emotions, about where they are in the body. And there are different ways to do that. Um, and certainly we have the body code, which uses a series of those charts um, to get specific. But if I have, for instance, an animal with an injury, um, I will ask them, uh, like let's say they have a stifle injury, I will ask about emotions that are in the sacrum or the nerve root or the hip so that I can release that whole area fully um, during a session and get some physical information as well. So that's a little overview of emotion code work. Um, tomorrow, uh, we will be back at 9.30. I'm not sure what we're talking about yet. We'll see what happens. Um, and I am still continuing to work on my many talks and appearances that I have coming up. And 
Um, I was interviewed by someone yesterday about my old house because I lived in a haunted house um, with a friendly ghost for a long time. And of course, the person on the other end of the phone was super skeptical, but I had many other people <laughs> that they were going to contact who could tell them that indeed I had this nice elderly woman living in my house with me. It was not a problem. But, um, and I was also, I'm also talking to someone about an article about girls, young girls, like 12, 15 year old girls, and their horses. And um, some of the ideas that have um, been like old ideas about girls and horses, you know, that it's just some kind of displaced male desire, which no girl with a horse would ever say. And, you know, a lot of well-adjusted people have had horses when they were young and had no issues with any kind of uh, uh, deep Freudian emotional problems. So that's a kind of a fun article because I've worked with so many young women and their horses and um, it's just an interesting, uh, wonderful bonding experience for a young woman to get a horse. They usually have to do a lot of work to have that horse and it creates a lot of um, uh, training for deeper relationships in your life and uh, it really changes you as a person when you have a horse when you're a young person. So that's kind of an exciting article as well. So we'll be pretty busy today. Hopefully it's not going to rain. They're saying possible rain. It's pretty cloudy. We need rain. It's going to rain solid for several days. So if we can get another one of these nice 75 degree days for a lovely walk, we're happy about that. So we will see you back tomorrow for another episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And let's get some Corgi music biscuit. booster seat so you can see Tristan better but I don't know that it's entirely successful <laughs> all right thanks for joining us today we've talked about an overview of an emotion code session for your pet or your horse or your kitty or your bunny or your dog so we will be back tomorrow at around 9 30 thanks for joining us today have a great day